Welcome to part 5 and the final part of this tutorial series where we're creating the sci-fi airlock corridor. So in this last part we are going to be adding the materials to the back wall and the door and we're going to be doing the texture painting just like we did for the other object. And then we'll just be finishing up the entire scene, adding a depth of field, rendering the scene, and doing some compositing. So just like we did in the other part, I just want to select the back wall here, and then I want to go here to the materials, let's click on the drop down, and I'm just going to add the walls material. But then I want to duplicate this material because we want to create a separate material to texture paint. So let's click here to duplicate the material, and I can just rename this like back wall. So I can now go over here to the shading workspace. So now this is its own material, so if we change it, it won't affect the other object's materials. So then right down here, here is the image, so I can just delete this image. And let's click on new to create a new image. So I'm going to create a 4K image to texture paint, so 4096 by 4096. And I can just rename this to back wall. And then right here on the color, again, I want the red, green, and blue to all be at 0.5, so that this is a mid-gray color. And then also the 32-bit float, so it's higher quality. And I can click on OK. So then before we texture paint this, we do need to go over to the UV editing. And so in the UV editing workspace, I'll just go to front view and I'm going to select everything. And then again, I can just UV unwrap this, the smart UV project and click on OK. And that will be fine for texture painting. And you can see that we still have the mirror modifier on the object. And I do want the mirror modifier. And that way we can just paint this side and it'll mirror it over to the other side. All right, so we can now go to the texture painting workspace. And I'm gonna go to front view and then real quick, before we do the texture painting, I'm just gonna go back to object mode and I'm gonna select the light and hide it and also select the camera and hide it just to get it out of the way. So I can select this object again and go back to the texture painting. And I'm gonna make this a black color. Let's make this a bit bigger and I'm first gonna start just by going along here and adding some lines like that. I think I'll do like three of them up here. Add a little square here, kind of going over and then going down. Add a few dots there. Maybe have something going down here. And let's add something there. All right. And I also want to make this a lighter color. So I'm just going to make it a lighter color. And then I can just kind of go along here and add some more of those bolts kind of going down this metal piece. So right there and there, and then a few here. And I'll just do that all the way down there like that. And also a few here. All right, that is pretty cool. Let's also add something like right here, kind of coming down over to the side and then back. And then I can also fill this in by adding some more lines here. And then I can make my brush a bit bigger and just kind of fill that all in. And then I can also change my brush color, maybe make it like a gray color. And I'll kind of go down here I'm going to add a line there, then kind of have it slanted sideways, and then have it going back. And maybe let's go down here, and let's add some things down here. So I'll go like that, and bring that down, and then I can fill this in as well. So I'm just going to add some lines on the top there, kind of thickening that. I can make my brush bigger, and kind of go in there and just fill that in. And then I can switch this color, so I'll make this a light color, and then I can go in here and just add a few little dots there. And maybe also add a few more kind of around this area there, and also maybe right up here. And then I'm also going to erase some things away. So I'll use the S key to select that mid gray color. And then I can just kind of go along here, maybe go the opposite direction like that. And I can just kind of go along there and kind of erase some areas. All right, and I don't want to add too much detail, so I think something like that is actually pretty good. So not too much. Um, let's go into the camera view, and I'm going to go into the rendered mode just to kind of see how that is looking. So I need to go back to object mode, and then I can press Alt H to unhide the light. And it is a bit dark, but we are going to be editing the material to actually make it a bit of a lighter color, um, but I think that is pretty good. So we need to save this image that we've painted. So let's click here on image and click on save as. And I'll just save this as back wall with my other textures and just save that. All right, so I now want to edit this material to make it a bit lighter. So I'm going to go back here to the shading workspace, and I'm just going to select the back wall. So one thing that I want to do is make it a bit less reflective. So right here on this mix node, before it's going into the roughness, I can make this a bit brighter. You can see if I make it brighter, it's going to be more rough. So I'm just going to make it kind of like a lighter gray color. 
And then I also want the bump strength to be a bit less strong because if I zoom in there, you can see the metal is a little bit strong there with that noise. So here on this bump, I'm just going to turn that to like a 0 0.01 so it's a bit smoother. Now I also want to make it a bit lighter. So if I just preview the color ramp, I do want to make this a bit brighter. So let's drag this over here and then I can click on this color and I want to make that a bit of a brighter gray color. And I'll also drag this a bit more into the center and then I can drag this back a bit. And I think I'll make this fully white. And actually I'm going to drag the white tab over here so it's a bit brighter and then I can drag this over so there's a bit more contrast. So something like that. I could also drag this over as well. And then let's take a look at this so I can just select the principled shader. I think I might want these to be even a bit brighter. So now you can see that back wall there is a much smoother metal and it's a bit more rough and it's a bit brighter. And that also will help to reflect more light into the rest of the scene. All right, so we're now going to be texture painting the doors. So let's select the door object here. And then if I click down here on the drop down, I first want to add the back wall material. So that is that same material there. But then I want to duplicate this material, so I can just click on this button here to duplicate it, and I can just call it like airlock doors. All right, so that is now a separate material. So then if I go here to the image, I can just delete this image, and then let's just add a new image, and this one I can just rename to airlock doors. And then again, I'm going to use 4096 so that it is a 4K texture, and then I'll leave the color at the mid gray color because we're painting a bump map, and also use the 32 bit float and then I'll click on OK. And then again, we want this color space here to be set to non-color. And I think that's something that I actually didn't change over here on this object. So if I click on the back wall object, I do wanna make the color space here non-color. So I'll change that to non-color. All right, so I can select the airlock door object again. So we now need to UV unwrap this. So I'm gonna go right over here to the UV editing. And then I wanna press the A key to select everything. And I can just unwrap this. And again, I'll just use the smart UV project. That'll be great for the texture painting. So we can now go right here to texture painting workspace. And then I'm gonna go to front view and I'm actually going to go back to object mode and I can select the camera and I can just hide the camera. And again, I can select the light and hide the light just to get it out of the way. And then something that I didn't mention in the previous part of the tutorial is how to get rid of that boundary that we used when we were painting the roof. So you can see we've added this boundary here. To get rid of it, you can just press the same shortcut, which is Alt B. So if you press Alt B, you can drag a box around the mesh, and then it's only gonna show you the mesh which was in that box. And we use that to texture paint the top of the ceiling. But you can just press Alt B to get rid of that. Um, but I'm now going to go into the material preview. And I'm going to zoom in here. Let's just select the doors and then I will go back to the texture painting mode. All right, so let's just paint this just like we've done with the other objects. So I'm just gonna add a few different things here. One thing that I wanna add is kind of like a cool panel around this object. So I'm gonna start by just dragging this up. Again, hold down the Alt key to constrain it to a line there. And I'm gonna bring that over there and then just kind of bring that down and then over there. And then I also want to add some lines down here. So I'll just make my brush a little bit bigger and I'm going to add a few lines there and I'm just going to go down and make lines all the way down the doors. And then I want to make this like a brighter color and I'm going to add a few more dots there and there as well. Just adding those bolts there and then maybe right over here. I want to add a few more details. So I'm going to go to this side of the door and I'll make my brush a bit smaller. And I'm going to add maybe like three lines here. So I'll just make a line there and a line there. And then right here, I can just add a few dots there. And I do want the doors to be a bit smooth. I don't want them to be too detailed, but I'm just gonna add a few more things. So I'm just gonna zoom in pretty close here and maybe I'll add like a slanted one there. And then I can just kind of have that going down. Let's also do another thing kind of right up here on the top. So I'm just gonna have this go down like that. And then I can have it go over to the side. Maybe even add a few bolts here around this object here, that panel. And then also maybe right over here, I can add something. So maybe a line here, then going down and then kind of coming back over. And that is really it for the doors. I don't want to add too much detail. So just that is what I'm going to add. So then let's save this image so I can click on image and we'll save this. And I'll save this as airlock doors with my other images and I'll click on save as. All right, so we can just go back to the shading workspace and then I can just press Alt H to unhide those other objects. 
So there is just one more thing that I want to do to the door material. So if I just select the airlock doors, I do want to make it even more rough. So right here on the mix on color A, I can just turn this up and that's going to make it a little bit more rough. And then the whole scene is still a little bit dark. So I'm going to select the area light right here and let's open up the settings right here on the side panel. And I want to turn this up to like 30 so that it is a bit brighter. I could also scale the area light up a bit and I could also bring the area light towards us a little bit. I think that's a bit better. So it's a bit more even lighting. So the lighting isn't quite as sharp. Now, if I select the back wall here, you can see some of the back wall is very sharp and dark. So right here on this bump, I'm just gonna turn the strength down a little bit so it's not quite as bumpy. I think that looks a bit better. And I might do the same thing for this object here. So on the doors object, I might turn down the strength a little bit of the bump so it's not quite as strong. That is a bit nicer. All right, so I now want to add the materials for the little panel there. So I'm just gonna zoom way in and select the panel. And this panel is going to have a very simple material. So so let's first click on the new button here to add a new material and I can just rename this to like panel. And then for this material, I first want to make it metallic. I also want to turn the roughness down just a little bit so it's a bit more shiny. And here on the base color, I could make this kind of like a dark color. So something like that is pretty good. And then I want to create another material for the emission lights. So I'm going to go into edit mode and then just hovering your mouse over the cubes, you can press the L key to select the linked vertices. And we're just going to select all of those buttons which are going to be glowing. So I now want to create a new material. So here in the material slots, let's click on the plus here and I can click on new to add a new material and I can just call this button lights. All right, and then I wanna replace this for an emission shader. So let's add an emission shader because an emission shader will be emitting light. Let's put the emission into the surface and then I can just delete that. And then we just need to assign the button lights material to those buttons. So I can just click on the assign button and then I can go back to object mode. Now on this emission here, I wanna turn up the strength quite a bit. So I'm gonna turn it up to like 20 and then keeping with the general lighting theme, I do wanna make the color a very slight blue color. So it kind of has a blue look. So that is pretty nice. So I now wanna add a depth of field. So let's go back here to the layout and I can go into the rendered view and then I can just click right here to select the camera. Let's go over here to the camera settings and we can turn on depth of field. And then for the focus object, I'm gonna use the eyedropper and I'm just gonna select the panel back there. And then I can just turn the f-stop way down and you can see it taking effect. So things that are close up are very blurry. So I can now just start to turn the f-stop up and I don't want there to be too much depth of field, so just a little bit. And I'm actually gonna go with like a 3.5 on the f-stop. So now down here you can see it is a little bit blurry, but then the door is focused, so that is a bit better. And also we have centered the brightest part of the light at the door, and that'll help to focus your eyes to the door, which is the main subject of the scene. All right, so we can now go over the render settings. So right here on the output properties, I'm gonna use a resolution of 2560 by 2560. You can of course use whatever resolution resolution you want, but I want a pretty nice high quality square image. And then also I'm going to go right here to the render properties and I'm going to open up the sampling and I'm going to turn the samples up pretty high. So I'm going to turn them up to like 500. Um, but if that's going to take too long for your computer to render, you could of course turn that down. But because this image is very dark, I do want a lot of samples so that it looks nice and sharp. So now we can just render this image. So I'll click on render and just render the image. And the scene has finished rendered and that is looking super nice. So we're now just gonna do some compositing to finish up the image and make it look really nice. So let's go right over here to the compositing tab. I can click on use nodes to use the compositing nodes. So the first thing that I wanna add is a denoise node. So let's just add the denoise. We're gonna drop this here. And I'm just gonna use fast because I find that it doesn't affect the quality. And then using the feature of the node wrangler, I'm just gonna control shift and select the denoise node so that we can preview it in the backdrop. Now to be able to add in more nodes, I'm gonna hold down the shift key and then right click and drag over that wire there to just add a reroute. So now we just have one single wire. So I also wanna do some color correction. So let's just add like the RGB curves. I really like using the RGB curves for color correction. And the denoise node is actually gonna take a while to load up. So with the denoise node selected, I can press the M key to mute the node and that way it'll be faster. So I now just wanna do some color correction. So I first wanna make the scene a bit more contrasty. So I'm gonna drag 
up a dot here and then drag down a dot there so that it is a bit more contrasty. And if you want to give it a tiny bit more blue, you could click here on the B for blue and you could turn this up just a little bit to add a tiny bit more blue. Now I also want to add a sharpen filter just to sharpen it and I think that makes it look a bit nicer. So I'm going to add the filter node. Let's just drop filter right here. And then instead of it being set to soften, let's use the diamond sharpen instead. So you can see what the diamond sharpen is doing. It's kind of sharpening up the edges. And because we don't have the denoise node enabled, it is also making it very grainy. Um, but when the denoise node takes effect, it'll smooth it out. But I do want to make the sharpen much less strong. So let's just go with like a 0.25, just a 0.25. So you can kind of see what that's doing. So it's just going to sharpen up the edges and I think it makes it look a bit nicer. And then the last thing that I want to do is just add some glare to those lights. So let's search for the glare node. I can drop this here at the very end and I want to use the fog glow. I think the fog glow is pretty good. And then I also want to add a few of them. So I'm going to add like three of them, but then I want to be able to see through some of these glares because you can see they are a bit strong. So I'm just going to drag the mix down into a negative number. I'm just going to drag that down a little bit and we'll see that taking effect. So now you can kind of see through the glare just a little bit more and you can see those lights a bit better. And I think I'll do that for one of these other glows too. So I'll just turn that down. So it's still going to be nice and big, but you'll be able to see through it a bit better. All right, so that is looking really nice. So then right back here on this denoise node, I can select the denoise and unmute the node by pressing the M key and we'll just let it denoise. And there is the final image. So then to save this image, I'm just going to select the viewer node. And if I open up the side panel with the N key, I can click over here on node and then I can just click on save this image and I'll just save this as sci-fi airlock corridor in the folder with my files and I'll just save this image but there we have it so there is the finished artwork so that's going to finish it up for this tutorial so I hope you enjoyed this and thank you so much for watching and this more intermediate level tutorial series is something that I'm just trying out so definitely let me know in the comments if you like it or let me know in the comments if you prefer the very slow step-by-step -step beginner friendly tutorial tutorials. And if you enjoyed this tutorial series and you'd like to help support me and this channel, you can also purchase the finished project files on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, links in the description. And some great ways to help support the channel here on YouTube is by checking out the YouTube memberships by clicking down there on the join button next to the subscribe button. And you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube to send me a little tip if you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you'd like to check out some other sci-fi corridor tutorials that actually have this sci-fi passage tutorial series on my YouTube channel, and then I also have this other sci-fi tunnel tutorial. You can check out those tutorial series with the links in the description. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series, and thank you for watching.